Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalo Mobile, and welcome to part 6 of this mini-series, Let's Make Solitaire in Unity. In part 5, we got to the position where it is technically possible to play a full game of Solitaire, and if you missed the previous episodes, I recommend checking them out first, as we will pick up right where we left off. In this video, we will implement double clicks and automatic card stacking. We will also allow players to reset the game and show a congratulatory message if they win. As usual, all the scripts and Unity packages are available in the description, and the most recent version can be played in a browser. Let's crack on. To handle double clicks, I'm going to use a timer and count the clicks. When the first click takes place, the timer starts. If another click takes place before the timer reaches the maximum time allowed for a double click to happen, then a double click has taken place, and we can see if the object double clicked on is eligible to automatically stack on a pile in the top deck. In the user input script, I create a private float timer and a private float double click time, and set that to 0.3 float. We can additionally create a private integer, click count, and set that to zero. In the update method, we start the timer if the click count is equal to one. If click count is equal to one, timer plus equals time dot delta time. If the click count is equal to three, then we reset the timer and set the click count back to one. If click count is equal to three, timer equals zero, click count equals one. If the timer is greater than the double click time, then we don't need to keep timing as too much time has passed for a double click to have taken place. So we reset the timer and make the click count zero. If timer is greater than double click time, timer equals zero, click count equals zero. Then whenever the mouse button is pressed, we increment the click count. Now we can set up a quick bool method called double click. If the timer is less than the double click time and the click count is equal to two, then a double click has taken place. Print double click, return true, else return false. There are two places where testing for a double click is useful. The first is cards in the deck pile, the second is cards in the bottom positions. First for the deck pile. If the same card is clicked on twice, then we should test if it was a double click. If slot one is equal to selected, then the same card has been clicked on twice. If double click, then attempt auto stack. Else it was not a double click, so select the same card again. We can apply the same logic to the bottom positions. Else, if the same card is clicked on twice, then we should test if it was a double click. If slot one is equal to selected, then the same card has been clicked twice. If double click, then attempt auto stack. Saving and playing, we can see that if we double click a card, it shows up in the console as a double click. To automatically check if the card is eligible to fly up to the top positions, we can create a new method called auto stack that takes in the selected game object as an argument. We loop through each position in the top. For int i equals zero, while i is less than solitaire.toppos.length, increment i, and get hold of the selectable attached to the stack. Selectable stack equals solitaire.toppos at location i dot get component of type selectable. First, if the card we're double clicking on is an ace, then we know it should always be eligible to enter at least one of the positions. If selected.get component of type selectable dot value is equal to one, so if it is an ace, if the particular stack we are looping through is empty, if solitaire.topposition at location i dot get component of type selectable dot value is equal to zero, and top position is empty, we set the ace to slot one and stack the stack dot game object. Slot one equals selected. Stack stack dot game object. I really should not have used the word stack as both a noun and a verb to describe different things, but you live and learn. We can then break out of the loop. Break. If it is an ace and the top position is empty, stack the ace up top in the first empty position found. Else, if it is not an ace, then things get a little more interesting. First, I check if the suit of the top position in the loop matches the suit of the card that we are testing. If the suit matched, then I test if it is sequentially correct to add the card to the position. If solitaire.toppos at location i dot get component of type selectable dot suit is equal to slot one dot get component of type selectable dot suit and solitaire.toppos at location i dot get component of type selectable dot value is equal to slot one dot get component of type selectable dot value minus one. We do not want to accidentally send a card from within a cascade to the top by double clicking it. So we test that it's not carrying any additional cards. So if it is the last card, if it has no children, then we make sure the card is in slot one. It already should be, but this helps the code be more readable slot one equals selected. As the value of the selectable script on each top position increases depending on the value of the highest card placed on top of it, we can determine what that card is by the suit and the value. 
First, I create a string called last card name and set it to be equal to the suit plus the value to a string. With specific adjustments for the picture cards. String last card name equals stack.suit plus stack.value to string. If stack.value is equal to 1, last card name equals stack.suit plus a. If stack.value is equal to 11, then last card name equals stack.suit plus j. If stack.value is equal to 12, last card name equals stack.suit plus q. And finally, if stack.value is equal to 13, then the last card name equals stack.suit k. We can then locate the only game object in the scene with that specific card name using the expensive but effective method gameObject.find. GameObject last card equals gameObject.find last card name. Now that we have located the position of the last card in the stack, and we do need the z position to make sure that the card in slot 1 gets stacked on top of it correctly, we can call the stack method and pass it the last card that we just located. Stack last card. We can then safely break out of a loop. Break. I will also add some comments to remind myself what I've done here. Find a top spot that matches the condition for auto stacking if it exists. To make sure that the cards we are auto stacking have no children, I've created a quick boolean method called has no children that takes in the game object as an argument. It loops through the transform of the game object and for each child it finds, it adds one to the int i. If i remains zero, then there are no children and it returns true, else it returns false. Int i equals zero. For each transformed child in card.transform, increment i. If i is equal to zero, return true, else return false. We can then replace the comment with the code. If has no children is true, we can pass it the game object in slot one. Back in both of the places where we tested for successful double clicks, we can now attempt auto stacking by calling the auto stack method and passing it the selected game object. Save and play, and we can see that double clicking now works. Cards automatically find the correct top position if they are eligible to fly up there. The ace of clubs is eligible and it finds the first position. The same is true of the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds. The two of hearts needs to seek out the ace of hearts, and it does. To switch things up a bit, I'm going to use Unity's built-in UI functionality to add a reset button to the scene. First, I add a UI canvas to the hierarchy, and then add a UI button. We can resize it and change the standard text to read reset, then anchor it to the bottom left of the screen. Any UI buttons created can be handled by a new script, which has been attached to the canvas called UI buttons. In UI buttons, we can create a method called public void reset scene. This method will find all the cards in the scene and remove them, clear the values in the selectable script of the top positions, and deal new cards. To locate the cards, I can create an array of type update sprite, as that script is unique to the cards. Update sprite array cards equals find objects of type update sprite. We can then loop through the array and destroy the game object of each card. For each update sprite card in cards, destroy card.gameObject. Create another method to clear the top values, void clear top values. This one creates a list of all selectable objects remaining in the scene after the cards have been destroyed. Selectable array selectables equals find objects of type selectable. For each selectable object, if it has the tag of top, the values are reset. For each selectable, selectable in selectables. If selectable.compare tag top, selectable.suit equals null, selectable.value equals zero. Then we can call the clear top values method from within the reset scene method, clear top values. Lastly, I find the solitaire script and call the play cards method to start the game again. Find object of type, solitaire, dot play cards. Heading over to the solitaire script, we now know that the play card script can be called a second time, so we need to make sure that we're starting with fresh lists to prevent duplicate cards. For each list of type string list in bottoms, list dot clear. Saving our scripts and heading back over to the editor, we need to plumb up the button in the editor. I add an onclick method and drag the canvas game object into the script hole. This gives us access to the reset scene method we just created on clicking the button. Playtest is a great success. Down the road, I intend to add high scores, varied levels of difficulty, and win animations, but I will start by establishing a win condition, notifying the player that they have won, and offering them the chance to play again. To test for a win condition, I add another script to the solitaire game, game object, and call this one the scorekeeper. It has a public boolean method I will call has won, which, for now, will loop through the selectable scripts in the top positions and count the values. If the values add up to 52, then all cards are present in the top positions and the game is won. int i equals zero for each selectable top stack in top stacks. We can add an array of type selectable and can just drag the top position game objects onto it in the editor. Public selectable array top stacks i plus equals top stack dot value. If i is greater than or equal to 52, return true, else return false. Then in the update method, add if has won, win. And then we can create a win method void win 
This prints a console message. Print, you have won. I want the player to be rewarded with a giant win message, so in the editor we can create a UI panel as a child of the canvas, colour it black so it covers the entire playfield, and add some congratulatory text in big bold letters. Additionally, I add a large button that allows players to play again. If I make a score screen, this is probably where it will go. Back in the UI button script, the play again button should call the reset scene method, but it also needs to make the congratulatory panel disappear. Public void, play again, reset scene. I'll call the panel a public game object high score panel and set it to be inactive if the player hits the button. High score panel dot set active, false. It also needs to be set to active in the event of a win, so in the scorekeeper script we can add high score panel dot set active true in the win method and public game object high score panel at the head of the document. The button is plumbed up as before and set to the play again method. The panel also needs to be provided in the editor to both the scorekeeper script and the UI button script. Lastly, the four top positions need to be added to the array in the scorekeeper script so that it knows where to count the values of the selectable scripts to establish a win condition. Back in the user input script, I will also add a quick line to make slot one equal to this dot game object if we click on the deck to stop cards from staying yellow after we click on the deck. Excellent. Now that is all done, we can finally play a full game. Building this has not made me any better at winning it, but this series has been a lot of fun to make, even if it has been incredibly time consuming. And depending on my schedule and any feedback I get, I may look to extend it. If you've stuck through to the end, wow, thank you so much. Hopefully you get something out of it, even if it was just the fun of seeing my many mistakes along the way. If I was to do this project again, it would probably benefit from a little more planning, but flying by the seat of my pants has been exciting and the game seems to work well enough. That's all for now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this series, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and please leave a comment. I'll try and write back, I'll see you next time.